just a useless governance token. How many times have you heard that phrase used to describe DeFi cryptos? And honestly, it isn't that far off base. One of the most biting criticisms of DeFi tokens over the past few years has been that although their protocols are seeing strong growth in users, total value locked, and other metrics, none of that value actually gets passed on to the tokens from those protocols. That's finally starting to change as a number of protocols are now paying fees directly to token holders. In today's video, I'm going to go through nine, that is nine protocols that are doing exactly this. I'll talk about where the revenue is coming from for those fees and what APR you can expect to earn if you are to buy and stake their tokens. And before I go any further, I want to emphasize that although I'll talk about a number of tokens and cryptos in this video, nothing I say is financial advice. You should still do your own research of which this video can be an important part. Let's get into it. First up, we have GMX. GMX is a decentralized perpetual exchange that allows you to trade top cryptos like BTC and ETH. It's on both the Arbitrum Layer 2 and on Avalanche. And the cool thing about GMX, in addition to the fact that it lets you leverage trade on chain, and leverage trading is one of the biggest businesses in crypto, is that it actually allows you to have a partial ownership in that business. So it's one of the biggest businesses in crypto, and then you can buy the GMX token and you receive almost a 21% APR. And of that APR, about 5%, 5 percentage points comes from Ethereum fees that people are paying in order to be able to trade on Arbitrum. So pretty cool. That's a pretty decent yield if you think about it. And if GMX grows and more people are using it, that yield should pass on to you as a token holder. And one other thing I'll say about GMX is that I do have a referral code, Dynamo, on the screen and down in the description. If you do decide to use GMX, you can get a discount on fees by using this code. And even if you've used it before, you're still eligible for the discount. Next up, we have Synthetix. Synthetix is one of the OG DeFi products. It's a protocol for creating, like you'd expect, synthetic assets. So you can create synthetic versions of real world assets like stocks, although that's started to fall by the wayside a bit because of regulatory reasons and you can use it to create synthetic versions of crypto assets like synthetic btc synthetic eth and so on and so forth and so why is that important right why would you care about synthetic btc well i do have a more detailed video on synthetics that i'll link in the description but the reason why it's important is because you can swap between those different assets like synthetic btc and synthetic usdc with basically no slippage. There's just a slight fee that Synthetix takes for exchanging those assets. And you guessed it, that fee goes to people who hold their token, and their token is the SNX token. And if you go over to the Optimism Layer 2, then you can see that that token earns 67% right now. 67% APR, single-sided, that is very good. And that's going to be paid out in a combination of stablecoins and in SNX inflation. So there is some inflation here, but a large portion of it is coming from fees that they're charging for people who are swapping between synthetic assets. Next up, we have Trader Joe. Trader Joe is the premier DEX on Avalanche. If you were farming on Avalanche back during last year, you are probably familiar with Trader Joe, and they also have their own NFT marketplace now. Basically, they are dominating the game on Avalanche up to now. And if you buy their Joe token, you can stake it in three different ways. There's S Joe, R Joe, and V Joe. R Joe lets you participate in launchpad events. V Joe lets you boost your farming rewards for the farming section of their platform. And then S Joe is what's relevant to us, and that stands for Stablecoin Joe. Basically, you earn USDC from fees that people are paying to swap on Trader Joe. So they're swapping between AVAX, USDC, all these other assets on Avalanche. They're paying USDC fees, and then those go to S Joe stakers, and that comes out to 34% APR just in fees. So this is ex extremely volatile, of course. These types of fees are very volatile, but that is a very, very nice APR coming solely from the fees on the platform. 
Next up, we have Trisolaris. Trisolaris is the top dex on Aurora. Aurora being an Ethereum compatible smart contract deployed on top of Nier. So basically you can think of this as like a dex on Nier. And Trisolaris allows people to stake Tri for P Tri, and then they earn a liquidity pool token that is entirely stable coins. So that is the USD TLP, which is a combination of stable coins. And right now this is actually paying out about a 22% APR. So that's entirely in stable coins, fees from the platform, and it's again, a 21% APR. So that is pretty nice if you are, of course, bullish on Nier and you're bullish on Trisolaris. Everything I say in this video, these tokens, it, they're only valuable if you're ultimately bullish on the project itself. But if you are bullish on the project itself, then paying out fees is a good sign of value accrual for that token. But value accrual from a project that has no value is not useful. And I'm not saying this about Trisolaris. This is about any of these projects. Next up, we have Curve. No list of projects that provide value to token holders would be complete without Curve. Curve is also one of the OG DeFi products, revolutionized the world of trading stable coins, and they allow you to stake their Curve tokens, CRV, for V Curve. And the longer you lock it up, the more V Curve you receive, and then V Curve holders receive a portion of the fees on the platform. And they also receive something called bribes, which is basically projects pay them to vote to give more liquidity. That's another interesting way of value accrual, but it's not really what this video is about. But as far as the fees themselves, this one earns about 2.8% right now. And you are probably thinking, well, that's lower. That's because Curve is generally considered to be safer because it's a larger project. It has more TVL. It's been around for longer. So naturally, the APR is going to be lower for that risk premium. But that is something to consider when you're deciding whether to lock your V curve or not. And of course, all of these fees will, the APR will fluctuate based on the future earnings of the protocol. Next up, we have Umami Finance. Umami is an application on Arbitrum, Arbitrum being an Ethereum layer two. And Umami is interesting. It actually started as a fork of Olympus. So it was back during DAO season last year, all these projects were coming out with these insane APYs, you know, 10,000% APY. I don't know what Umami's was, but it was high, I'm sure. And Umami was actually able to transition away from that. I did a video on them recently. I'll link that down below as well. And what's interesting is they've been able to get to no inflation, so they no longer have any inflation. And basically, they have a vault of their treasury, which they're using to earn yield from various different ways. And then the fees from that, they pay out two stakers, and it's about a 5.4% APR right now. But the interesting thing with Umami is that this is actually going to go up because pretty soon they are deploying a Delta Neutral Vault where people can deposit USDC and earn Delta Neutral yield on it using a combination of short farming strategies and GMX. And so then once that happens, this yield should go up more because it adds a new source for it. And I don't have any affiliation with any of these projects, but like I said, I covered Umami at length in another video that I'll link down below. Next up, we have Looks Rare. You may be familiar with Looks Rare if you are into NFTs, or even if you're not into NFTs, you may have heard about it because of the insane rewards they were paying out earlier this year. Looks Rare is an NFT marketplace like OpenSea, so you can list NFTs, you can trade them, you can do all sorts of things, and they take a fee, a percentage on all NFTs that are sold in that platform, and that fee, in fact, goes back to people who stake their token, their looks token. And right now, that is about a 58% APR. And if you look at the breakdown on this, then, or 58% APY, excuse me. If you look at the breakdown on this, 20% comes from looks, 27% comes from ETH, and then that's 47%. That goes up when you compound, so that's why it's APY. But that's pretty good. That means most of the yield is actually coming from the ETH fees. And they've been criticized because some of those fees are people wash trading because they also pay traders to trade on here. But at the end of the day, it's still fees going to token holders. So from your perspective as a token holder, it's still yield and, and it is still ultimately coming from people paying to trade NFTs on the platform. Next up, we have something called Gains Network. Gains Network is in the Polygon ecosystem and they have a product called G Trade, and G Trade lets you trade both cryptos and forex with leverage. So 
you can trade things like BTC, ETH on chain. Like I mentioned when I talked about GMX, that's one of the biggest businesses in crypto. That's where places like FTX make most of their money. But then you can also trade Forex and the Forex volumes worldwide are enormous. I'm not sure if people realize that, but we're talking trillions and trillions of dollars being exchanged on a regular basis of people swapping different Forexes. So Gaines is trying to bring that on chain. People who decide to do that on chain will pay a fee and that fee goes back to token stakers. Now, right now, there's a caveat with this. This protocol, they go specifically to people who have paired the gains token, GNS, with DAI, and that pays a 54% APY right now, about 19% of which comes from those fees, and the rest comes from various trading rewards. This will be transitioning to single-sided staking at some point, but right now it's important to note that this one is in fact liquidity, but I included it because they are still paying out fees to token holders in a sense, and it's transitioning to single-sided staking. Finally, last but not least, we have Ribbon Finance. Ribbon Finance is a really interesting protocol on Ethereum. They allow you to use various options-based strategies like covered calls and put selling to earn single-sided yield on assets like AVAX, SOL, and Ethereum. And you can see they are, allow some pretty decent single-sided yields. I think I've talked about this protocol before. We're talking 20, 30, 40% on top tier cryptos. Well, they also allow you to stake their ribbon token, RBN, for governance, and then you get a share of protocol re revenue for staking it as VRBN. And unfortunately, unlike these other protocols, they don't display the APR or APY that this pays out. So I can't share that with you because I don't know it, frankly. Uh, but they do still pay out the fees to token holders and people are still paying a fee for using these options strategies. And those are the nine protocols that I have today. Really like this trend. As far as the regulatory implications of it, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't speak to that. But as, as a token holder and as a crypto investor, this is definitely something that I'll be looking for in DeFi projects. Moving forward, it is a new gold standard. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.